What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Multiverse Monologues, the podcast show where we like to travel across the multiverses and fandoms that we love to talk about the movies and television shows that accompany those universes. I am your host, Ben Rayside, and today we are going to be traveling back to a universe that we have been a part of for a long time. It is the MCU. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is here, or rather it has been here for quite some time. I, it's, been a, it's been a while since the movie has been out, and finally, uh, we are gathered here today to finally discuss this huge, epic, expansive very mixed at times film across this introduction to Marvel Phase 5. And I, I did say we because joining me uh, for this Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania podcast is Mr. Ethan Wetzlaff. Ethan, how are you? Hello, I am doing great. And uh, I just want to take this time to apologize to all of our fans. This episode is coming very late. We're sorry. And also, we did not have an episode that we posted this Monday. And we're sorry for that also. So hope, hopefully this is a, a good medicine, a good remedy, and uh, our relationship isn't too damaged. But yes, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yes. We experienced as much disappointment as you guys did with not receiving that notification this Monday morning because we, we love doing what we do. And I'm glad to be back in the studio with not only Mr. Wensloff, but Mr. Mike ahead. Micah, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. You know, this this is the first movie of Phase 5, right? This right. is the first one. You know, this is also movie number 31. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many flavors they have at Baskin Robbins? Oh. Well, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, guess. Is it 31? <laughs> oh, you got that right on the head. Holy canvas. <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, is the 31st flavor of Marvel MCU. Mm-hmm. And Scott Lang... Scott Lang, right? Scott Lang? Yeah. I work with a Scott Long, so I, I, oh, I have to... Oh, wow. <laughs> Scott Lang worked at Baskin Robbins and was fired. I, I, think, I think that was my favorite... Uh, <laughs> that was my favorite running joke of this whole movie was this stupid Baskin Robbins. That was thing. really great. <laughs> and yes, Kevin Feige was uh, confronted about that. Me and Ben did a, did a full Entertainment Weekly article, and the lady interviewing Kevin Feige asked him if that was on purpose, if the 31... The 31st movie and Baskin Robbins were connected, and Kevin Feige said, Well, I mean, we'll leave it in. We'll leave it in. Yeah. Listen, Kevin Feige's <laughs> always got a plan. Yeah, all right. Peter Parker's in Spider Man 2. I mean, uh, Iron Man 2. Of course he is. Right. He's, all, he's been planning this since <laughs> since when he was a, like a part of the Superman, like back in the old, old days. You know what I'm saying? Like when he was inspired, his little kid brain was working. And he's had this all planned since then. So it, there's no coincidence that Baskin Robin has 31 flavors, and this is the 31st MCU movie. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would consider hitting subscribe on the YouTube channel. I would also consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you do that, we will read it on our weekly show, Me and Ethan Will. And it would be greatly appreciated. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's open our sling rings and head over to the MCU. There's someone I never told you about. He's that monster. You cannot trust him. Who? Let me make this easy for you. Bring me what I need. Everything you're holding on to will end. We're gonna get out of this, and we're gonna go home. Bad man. Yeah, if you leave. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is the latest flavor in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's a flavor that people, I'm not going to lie, they aren't really enjoying. This is this is tied, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, but this is tied with the least performing, like on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, whether you like them or not, this is tied for the lowest Rotten Tomatoes critic score 
across all of the MCU at 47. That's is it a big deal? Is it not? I feel like that's something to talk about, at least, because 47 percent is very low. Ethan, would you say this is a, a movie that deserves to be at 47 percent? I definitely would not say that. And in uh, a universe and a world where Marvel Studios has released a movie to the to the quality of Thor Love and Thunder, I am surprised that anyone would complain <laughs> at anything any ever. <laughs> I, 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 I like this movie. And this, spoiler alert, I think all three of us liked this movie. And uh, maybe, maybe I'm jumping the gun on that, but I don't think I am. And we're getting to a point where it's really weird because something else the three of us liked that a lot of people didn't like was Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So this is very, very interesting because I don't understand what is happening. I really don't because I am really liking the MCU. And yes, there are a lot of missteps. There are. And some things I would be doing differently for sure. But also there is so much they're doing right. It's so much to look forward to. And Kevin Feige just just addressed a lot of the problems that we've had. They've uh, uh, slowed down the release on the Marvels. That's not coming till November. So they're taking their time on that. They want to uh, make sure that it is to the quality it needs to be before they release it. I love that. Uh, Loki's going to be releasing a little later than we anticipated. So they are pumping the brakes. They're taking their time. And yeah, there's been some missteps, but I don't know. I think I think Ant-Man is really not not that big of a misstep. It has some fall, flaws for sure, but I think it overall, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. That's good. I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. I, I know I enjoyed this movie. Micah, you've seen it twice, and I'm sure you also enjoy this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I got to say, uh, there are definitely some strange things afoot at the Circle K, and these last few movies, we have not been in agreement with the critics' consensus. Would you guys agree? Because yeah. we had, we had uh, what were the last few? There was Love and Thunder. You already talked about that. Uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, Black Panther, Wakanda for, Forever, and Werewolf by Night was one of them. Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. All of these have been kind of, oh, and we can't forget Morbius, too. I mean, that <laughs> oh, one got a 16. I think Critic. we can. <laughs> that got a 16. Can you... That wasn't a 16 okay, movie, Okay, I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Yeah, even, like, memes aside... It's not a 16. To compare this score, though, to a ranking system, which I actually do respect, and that is IMDb. This is at a mm. 6.5, and so basically 65% this would go. And it's definitely one of Marvel's lower movies. And with the introduction to Phase 5, does that bode well? I mean, yeah. how how often should we put thought into critics consensus like is it is it we've reached a point now where there's so much in the mcu to where it has to be just individualistic at this point mm. yeah i don't know i love that you say that it's probably lower tier when you look at all the marvel movies but man come on i i was looking at my mcu ranking today and man i i love the mcu i really do i i call us fanboys if if you're listening to this and you're like man these guys are a bunch of losers yeah sure <laughs> Call us fanboys, call us whatever you want. We just really love this content, and I think they're doing good stuff. But, yeah, I'm looking at all the MCU movies, and I'm like, man, I really like a lot of these. And Iron Man, which I had previously had in the last place, we just rewatched it in our Marvel movie marathon, and I loved it. So mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows what's going on? But Do you guys think that critics are hopping on a bandwagon of the bad reviews get clicks? Because there was a period of time for a while where review bombs were the only thing that would get clicks. And what I see here on Rotten Tomatoes is that the critics' consensus says that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania mostly lacks the spark of fun that elevated earlier adventures. I, I would say this was a fun movie. It is a f absolutely this was totally it's a, fun a fun movie. movie. This, I think this was the right direction of fun that 
the MCU should be going in compared to Thor Love and Thunder. Yes. Because that was trying to do a fun little romp through whatever, and it just fell on its face because it didn't take itself seriously enough. But this movie had enough substance in it where it was able to take itself seriously while also sprinkling jokes that don't undercut the severity of the situation. Most of the time. Most of the time. I think yes, there, there are... are Modoc yeah. could have been a bit better, but for how he was written, how... Just outlandish the character is. How can you do that live action without making him look bad? If if they took him completely seriously, the audience would have been laughing at the wrong spots. Yes, I <laughs> and I think that they took Modok the best way they could have. Because how else do you write him? Uh, Ant Man, yes, he's a funny character. He had to have funny stuff in it. And putting him up against Kang, you're out of your league, Ant Man. Oh, man, it really just shows how a, an, an Avenger like Ant-Man has no chance against Kang. Kang let him win for most of this movie. And yes, it was to Kang's demise. And Ant-Man eventually does take over this one Kang. But there are so many other Kangs. And this movie sets up what the rest of Phase 5 is going to look like. So yeah, let's, go yeah let's talk about that, Micah. So do you think... All right, so spoilers for this movie. When uh, I'm assuming everyone listening to this yeah, far like a month knows guys, come that, on. <laughs> so we'll just say that. But yeah, uh, Mike, do you think that the king in this movie dies? Do you think he's dead? I think he's defeated. I don't mm-hmm. think he's dead. I think okay. he's trapped in that um, thingy, the orb thingy, uh, and he will come back later as a very powerful king. Because this is King the the Conqueror, right? Right. And there was no other Kang the Conqueror. This there is, are a lot of Conquerors, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of Conquerors, but this is Kang the Conqueror, I think right? they referred to him as this, like the Conqueror variant of what I, Kang. Yeah, what I see on uh, the IMDb trivia, we see there are, uh, there's Rama Tut King. Yep. Yep. So we saw him, that's like the Egyptian King. There's Amortis. Do you guys know anything about Amortis? There's Scarlet Centurion. There's Victor Timely. There's Chrono Monitor. 616. So those are our main Kangs that we're introduced to that we, we don't get the names of them in the movie really, but um, these I'm guessing will be the future like leading Kangs going forward. I Yeah, I would think so. Jonathan Majors was recently in an interview and he, they were asking him how does it, an actor having to approach this many roles it's very interesting because to have it be this big mm. and have all of your acting ability on like for the world to see, he said that, well, it's a very interesting, you know, situation. And there's really nine roles that I have really like honed in on and focused on. And I don't really, I take that to mean that he's got nine variations of Kang in his back pocket. We have one from Loki, which if you haven't seen Loki, please do yourself a favor. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Which, if you haven't seen Loki, please go watch. Do yourself a favor. It might be the best show on Disney Plus. I, I, in my opinion, I'm a not Marvel gonna lie. show or show show show. 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 Oh, I'm not gonna, gonna say the, the Star Wars documentary this is, is really good too. This is a Star Wars fan <laughs> saying this. I have just also recently rewatched The Mandalorian. I've also rewatched Loki. I'm not going to lie. I had a better time with mm. Loki. It's better than Obi-Wan Kenobi. But, well, <laughs> yeah. Both of them are great. Don't get me wrong. But the emotion that that show can start. Anyway, this isn't a Loki podcast. But you have a He Who Remains variant of Kang in Loki, who is fantastic. You have Kang the Conqueror variant. You have all of these Kangs at the end of this movie. It can be hard to keep track of. Is that going to be a problem? Hmm. No. So to me, I think that the Kang we met in this movie will be the Kang in Kang Dynasty. I think so too. I think that he might even be the Victor Timely we see at the end in the Loki post credit scene. Really? Yeah. So I think that if they're being smart, they're going to focus on one Kang through this whole journey. Because, yeah, sure, seeing Rama Tud and... Uh, Scarlet Centurion, seeing all these different Kangs show up randomly, that, that's cool. But yeah, I, I don't want to keep seeing Kangs die over and over and over. You have to set up a Kang and stick with them. Agreed. Because yeah, if they just keep cycling through these Kangs, we're not going to be invested. We're not going to feel like they're a threat because we're just wiping them out anyway. 
I also feel like Kang needs some like emotional weight to have him have more of a story than just being a conqueror, mm. you know, because that's his one motivation at this point. In the comics, his motivation is to save his time in the future and ultimately to save his wife, Ravona Renslayer, who we do see in Loki. So the seeds are there. They may go in that direction. I think he... So we've just been talking conceptually about this. He was absolutely fantastic in the role. He oh, absolutely killed it. He made the movie for me. But I think he just needs that one more like extra bit of emotional character depth. And he has me as one of maybe the best villains of all time. Oh, like yeah. all time? He, his performance in this. Wow. And I think with time, given Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty, right. how much he plays into all of this, I think he might give one of the best villain performances of all time. Time is not what you think it is. Listen, his acting ability is insane. It's I insane. love the subtlety that he puts in some of his line delivery. You will bring me what I need. Or I will kill your daughter in front of you. you I look like a liar to you. Stop! I am Kang! You! You talk to ants! The emotion that he says, uh, like, I have to do this. He's being forced to. He doesn't... It, it, it seems like he doesn't want to at, at times. Like, if he had the option to just avoid... All this death and destruction, because he knows he's killing people. He knows that he's wiping out timelines. But he's doing it for a reason. He's doing it for a reason. We don't know the reason yet. And whether it's the one that Ben said, or if it's a different one, that would be interesting to develop. And it could really put him above Thanos very quickly. The reason he's already on the level. Yeah, the I think that there are there there can be more cold lines. Like Thanos has some lines, man. He's got some quotes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. And once Kang gets a couple of those under his belt. Whew, Especially because this is early in the phase. This is our first, like, this is our first King the Conqueror, right? And this is, like, we're going to have a lot more screen time of King, I feel. Right, than right. Than Thanos. And a lot. We Thanos, already have, Thanos had a yeah. lot of, like, over time, just short little snippets in the post-credits. Right. But this will be the first villain that we get long-term. Right. That's why it's so cool. That that was what I was in the back of my mind the whole time while watching this movie. It's that this guy is going to be pervasive throughout MCU phases yeah, five and how six. How do you top Thanos? How do you top Thanos? And this is they're they're doing a great if they job. They keep doing what they're doing. I think yes. they will. And one yeah. misstep, and it's already worse than Thanos. I like what you say about the quotes deal because how do you make a villain epic? You give him epic quotes, and it's done. You think of all the yeah. epic villains. And Joker, every single yeah, line. Yeah, right, right. And credit where credit is due. Jonathan Majors improved a lot of these lines that we're hearing. He came up with a good amount of them himself, like on the day. So, yeah, sure, maybe writing's in there, but we have we have Jonathan Majors. When you put great people in roles, they can elevate what may be an okay role to something that is truly spectacular and Ben I love that you bring up Loki a little earlier because there is a disconnect between uh people and like for example we went with uh your wife and her brother and they were uh, quite confused for a lot of this movie and I want to ask you two are were you guys confused with the concepts because I understood it pretty simply and yeah what part were they confused about just like I, the whole thing? I don't know. Did the, they watch Loki? Kang? Yeah. Well, so, that's, see, see, that's, that's, I think is the problem. Now we're diving into territory where you have to watch Loki. This is a, Loki is pretty much essential to watch, but they do explain the timeline thing with Kang pretty well. They, they, you know, show the circle and time is not what you think it is. And they introduce Kang again, just in case you hadn't seen Loki, but you don't get the, the motives like how they explain it in in loki so in a way it's almost getting it could be getting a little too big for a casual fan right to keep track of all of this information because if you there are people who were out there and watched the six episodes of loki thought about it for a day or two and then let it go from their minds right the people who watched that show, I know people who watched the show and went into it and they was like, oh, this is a nice new villain. Not even connecting the dots that, right, oh, this is right. the same dude from Loki. I mean, he is a different dude, but... <laughs> yes, but it's the same actor and it's the same yeah. pretty much... And I want to I ask, is it a different dude? 
Or That's is, also a really great question. Oh. Is he who remains just the Kang from this movie, but in the future, many, many years mm. down the line? What do you think of that? I think it's a different Kang. I think that he who remains is going to be the Kang dynasty. Kang. Like the, no? I think, think so? I think he who remains will be a part of the Kang dynasty. And I think that the Avengers... I think the Secret Wars or Kang Dynasty, however they end it, one of those movies will end with our Avengers putting Kang or Kang putting himself in the Citadel at the end of time. I forget. So Kang, he remains from Loki, is the last Kang chronologically, right? right. right. Yes. And Sylvie stabs him, killing him. Ending Kang. And plus, what he says Elias. there. Yeah. And I just watched the yeah, episode you did. an hour ago. What he says there is so important. If you stab me... A million versions of me will come out, infinite versions of me, and multiversal war, and time will go on, and I end up right back where I started. Reincarnation. So that Loki, in a way, not in a way, gets reincarnated. I can totally Kang. see this, Kang. Yeah. Being this version in Ant-Man and right. the Wasp Quantumated. Because their goals are very, very similar. It's the same stakes. He proposes the same stakes to, to Scott. He says, you know, that if you kill me, this yeah. will happen. If you don't kill me, yeah. this will still happen. And something I always, I always like to look at a lot is, you know, whenever in history class, you look at a timeline, it's one straight line. You know, start to where we are now. You know, yeah. whenever. That's the timeline. But in the MCU so far, whenever they've showed us a timeline... It's been a circle, complete circle, a one eight, a one, a three sixty loop, you know, just ever continuing. So that's how I think the Kang dynasty will end. I think it will end the same way it started, with that Kang in the Citadel at the end of time. Just a universal constant. It won't. Right. Do you think that they'll end in the Loki season finale? It'll be a, a time emergence where they see each other again, kind of Back to the Future style, or what do you guys think? So it's interesting because I wonder if they'll make that the ending based off of a TV show ending. Right. Is that right. the end of Marvel? Well, no. We, no. So, okay. But Fantastic Four are not even really touched yet. X-Men aren't even touched yet. Those are two of the biggest things in uh, the comics. And Kevin Feige just did an interview where he said he'd like Marvel to run 80 years. So yes, I think... During this saga, you're feeling it. Fans are like, what the heck? We're done with this same old crap. And you're seeing the reviews say that too. But us guys who really do like this stuff, we're still on board. We're still ready for new stories. So I think you will start getting that uh, more like, oh, it's got to be your thing. It's got to be your thing to be a Marvel fan. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay because... Uh, to me, like my favorite show of all time is Lost, and as Lost kept making more seasons, people kept bailing on the show, saying it's too complicated. It's losing what made it great. It's dumb now. But now, I I look at Lost all six seasons. I love that. I think it is great. It's one of my favorite shows. So I think that the MCU can kind of be the same way. People are hopping off the ship like this multiverse stuff. Way too complicated. Mm. I don't get it. I don't care. But I think for the people who stick around and are really invested in it right now, I think we'll, we will be rewarded in the end. So Marvel doesn't end at the end of the Phase 5. Does it reboot? Like uh, X-Men... Interesting. X-Men yeah. Days of Future Past style. So right. one of the th great things about this movie, that I, I, it has problems, and I want to get to those eventually, but one of the great things that this movie has done for me is that it's made me... I haven't watched a lot of videos on Marvel in a while. This made me go back, rewatch Loki, rewatch Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes Ooh. on K the Kang Whoa. episodes of those that old cartoon show. I have been so deep in depth of where this can go and the future stakes that this represents that I have been thinking more about Marvel than I ever have in a long time. Like, and it, it, I love it. I love it. It was, this is back to the days when I would theorize what would happen in infinity war Endgame. This, these are the type of Marvel movies that I get excited for that represent stakes going forward. And I think that in fact, I, I'm almost positive this is where they're going to go because we already have Hugh Jackman going back. 
in Deadpool 3. They're going to bring back for this multiversal Secret Wars incursions type deal. They're going to bring back many actors from the Fox X-Men universe, the Spider-Man universe, Tobey Maguire, the Fantastic Four universe, all to have this huge, epic, grand scale finale in Avengers 5 and 6. Absolutely, I think that's where they're going. I think that's where they should go for a multiversal phase four, five, and six that they, they're going to. They can't have a Marvel, uh, they can't have an Avengers movie be worse than Endgame. And in that way, you give all of these characters a last hurrah mm. send off in a way, maybe not the way, like respectfully or whatever, but many of these characters, besides maybe Logan, did not get. A proper ending, I guess. Right. This is a way to almost do that, celebrate what has come in the last 20, 25 years, and then at the very end, reboot everything, yeah. keep the same actors and everything like that, and start So Secret Wars almost. is the flashpoint. Yes. Secret Wars reboots it. And, and I think that's where they're going to go. Reboot how? Different timeline? Not a different timeline. Same timeline. timeline. But to re- almost reset all of the incursions because we already know that but, all of those things are going insane. So, it, yeah, I think that's interesting. I don't know. They, they just have so many characters that I don't think they want to abandon in 2025. So reboot, meaning they're going to erase all the multiverses and create one Earth? Yes. Okay. okay. Not, and it's it'll be a soft reboot in right, a way. You're right. still going to have all your actors that we've grown to love in the MCU that can still stick forward. But obviously you're going to recast or bring in new characters for the X-Men Fantastic Four because these are from all the old, old multiverses. This is the one sacred timeline. We're going to unite all of it, and that's how you get your Avengers, your Fantastic Four, your X-Men, all of the teams in the MCU going forward. So at the end of uh, Avengers, what would that be? Five? Six? Six. six. At the end of Avengers 6, do you think their goal is to create uh, a movie that sets up a new starting point for people to start on. Yes. Because I, I think after that's 30, 40, 50 movies almost. Right. You got to have a spot you where do. someone could just start and then move on from there. That's absolutely disassociated almost entirely from the movies prior. Because then how is someone supposed to go in? How? It, right. it, it's almost impossible. We're It's taking us months to get up, to get caught up. Years. <laughs> so like, the, yeah, this came at a time for us where we're, we were young when these movies first started yeah. coming out. So, of course, we ran to the theaters and we saw every single one of them. And I do, there are so many people, so many people who have seen everything in the MCU. It's not that hard to stick with a franchise that you love. But, yeah, the, the, the casual people will start to fall off or the kids being born right now. <laughs> How are they going to buy into this world? Dude, the middle schoolers, I, I know some middle schoolers who have never seen a Marvel movie, even though they're like the demographic. Right. Like many, many people don't even know superheroes. And that's crazy to me how they can just, they're, they were just like me back then. You know, they play Minecraft, they play Star Wars, yeah. they, they but they don't, they don't watch Mando. They don't watch any of the new Marvel stuff. They just watch the old stuff. They watch one through six Star Wars. They watch... Maybe old MCU, uh, and that's about it. Yeah, that's why it's going to be important. As Kevin Feige has always been about to make the movies a great entertainment, you know, a filmmaking experience. You know, you can go to the movies and you can sit down and you mm-hmm. can watch it without feeling like you need to have done your homework. And I think that's where fans are getting frustrated now because. In a way, I think that's a, a, a complaint that's been raised by Sam, by Johnny, you know, by some of our friends that I, uh, well, how am I supposed to remember this? If I got to remember this to enjoy this oh, movie, take then notes. that's bad. <laughs> yeah, right. study before this one. And I, I get that to some point and to a degree that that does enhance my enjoyment. Loki, having seen Loki before this movie and having that in my brain enhances how I see Kang, where I see this going. And I think that also is why people have two different takes for the end credit scene for the council of kings i've i love absolutely love the council of kings scene but i've seen many people online even some major film reviewers say that was the most cringe scene they've ever seen i'm talking about the kang scene in right, in, in, the, right. in the arena when they're all There's hyping each credit, other yeah. up yeah i thought it was so fun i love that was that. really fun 
Yeah. It's kind of scary looking forward. Not because it's like, oh, that's hot. Like, oh, I love that. But because legitimately right. the stakes behind that scene oh, yeah. and what it means is insane. Like they are fired up about conquering. <laughs> so I want to say, if my theory proves to be true, what is bringing your theory? back all of those okay. old characters, there is no better time to start hopping on the Marvel movie marathon with <laughs> multiverse monologues oh. because we are covering all of those old Marvel films. Exactly. And if they're going to bring them all back, I think those of us who are going on this journey are going to be paid our dues. By those well. of us, you mean the men in this room. <laughs> Pretty much. Every yes. variant will be in that movie. Every single variant. But I'm saying that's a possibility. Now, it from is. a filmmaking and perspective, yeah. I do but. want to highlight this quote that uh, the Marvel Studios creative executive, Stephen Brossard, says that Robert Downey Jr. is no longer on the table for future mm. returns. And I was... I. It's because he shaved. He could, yeah, right. He shaved his head. But <laughs> sure, whatever. Studios lie to us all the time. He could just be lying. But I am... I fully believe this. I'm fully on board with this. That's what Endgame was. Endgame ended Tony and Cap's story. I do mm. not think we are going to see those two again. And I, that, I don't want to see them again. I don't. I don't want to see them yeah. again. That's the that's point. Pulling them out of the grave. <laughs> right. Right. What? Like people already complain. Like, oh, what? What this multiverse stuff? Nothing is set in stone. So yeah, I do think if they were to bring back Tony or bring back Cap. I would be upset. Now, can you bring back variants of them? Yeah, but I do not think Chris Evans can play Cap. I do not think uh, well, he's got a different role. Uh, Robert Downey can play Tony because I those are our characters. They are gone. What the heck is Endgame? You know, Endgame's their goodbye. And if you take that away from us, I'm going to be mad. I am so. Storm. Yeah. So, so you're saying please. that. Secret Wars will be a culmination of this. In this culmination, do you picture Tony and Cap being there? Well, Kevin Feige has said that he doesn't want this to just be a culmination of the last three phases, but of the last six. He right. wants this to almost be viewed like you can watch this as six phases. Right. And while I would be a little confused to see Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans back, I don't know that I would be disappointed it would mm. really depend on how they did it and my fear of how they would do it is making me a little apprehensive to that idea but i think if they bring them back in a, a way that makes sense i think i'm good with it honestly especially cap more so than iron man iron man really definitively got his ending yeah and cap did too he got his happy ending but it I is think more, there's room yeah, there. Yeah, there, the door's a little more open for Steve. Yeah. But let, Iron Man, I don't want to see Iron Man ever again. Ever. I am just so content with how that story ends. Yes, mm. I agree. And I think doing more would only ruin it. And sure, more of a more of something we love is is always good. But, you know, too much of a good thing is also a bad thing. So Yes. Tony uh, Cheeseburger. I also uh I want to talk about Loki again. And in the quantum realm, while we're in it, so yeah, we are talking about Ant Man. So let's let's jump back to Ant Man. All related in the quantum realm. They while they're there, they mention that this is a place out of time. We also learn in Loki that the TVA is a place that's out of time. Oh, is so it quantum? yes, is the TVA somewhere in the quantum realm? So do you guys think? What what are we? Feeling? Or is it just? I don't think it's quantum realm. I think it's um, beyond time, like where. Um, one who remains was he wasn't remains, that yeah beyond and the watcher he's beyond time too yeah because the citadel's right in the middle of that right. loop so no that's interesting I, I didn't I have never thought about that I think it's a different realm thing um, I always just pictured it like a, a station in space you know that's always what I pictured in my head if I even thought like I don't know. It definitely could be, though. I could totally see them going there. And that would be cool, because they would totally have connections. But, I mean, that's what I was thinking. And then you have the end credit scene with Loki and Mobius. Mobius. And it, lo it, lo it looks like they're back on the trail of they're going to be hunting this character who I fell in love with 
in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. And I, I can't, I could not be more excited about season two of Loki. Like they're gonna try yeah. to do the the Rhodey approach to destroy their enemy. <laughs> Just go back to when he was baby, and you might have to take him out. Honestly, that's the only way to destroy Kang. I and, wonder. I wonder if they'll make Victor timely, like the uh, an ancestor, you know, like an ancestor or the same person, just a different. No, variant. no, like like an like an ancestor of of Kang from the thirty first century, you mm-hmm. know, like someone way back, you know, like from the night. I think they're in the night nineteen hundreds, like early, but they could make him like yeah the first. So. Uh, Screen Crush, Ryan Airy, fantastic channel, fantastic guy. Go check him out. He's done a lot of great videos on just Marvel and Quantumania specifically, but he made a video uh, two days ago where he talked about how Victor Timely, he thinks, is the Kang from this movie and how when Kang gets sucked in at the end there, he's uh, teleported back to 1920 and he is stuck there now. Did he have the scars? I don't think he had the scars. No. And it has to be an earlier case. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see though. I think I, that's I, really cool. I want so bad to believe and this this might be a problem if they don't fix it, but I want so bad for this king to come back. Right. Because I really, really so love yes, it. Let's I think talk, we won't see him for a while. Let's talk about that. So that's a big complaint with the movie. Yeah. Kang dies. Ants get him. Right? That was so epic. if this Kang doesn't come back. How big of a problem is that? I don't think it'd be too much of a problem. I think it'd be wasted potential. Right. Um, but I think that what they did with the end of this movie was written so beautifully. Hmm. How you can have this most happy, unhappy ending I've ever seen. Because hmm. Oh, you mean the the scene with him they win, talking. Right. Right? But do they? But do they? That was a great ending. Oh, that is man. a good ending. The, You're right. The yeah. inner monologue that monologue that oh. Scott had as he was walking down the street with his uh, Baskin Robbins cake that tasted awful um, was it. You don't see something like that in, right. in movies anymore, and that's something that I hope that they continue going right. forward. Is that Marvel continues to stretch its legs, do new things because that's new. We we haven't seen an unhappy ending like that since Infinity War. Or like an yeah the the uh, it's ambiguous you know, yeah, or, yeah yeah <laughs> and we might get something like that yeah. in Guardians three so there's a theory out there that this might be a very sad well, phase <laughs> at the end of this movie he's having this inner monologue in and of himself and he's thinking this stuff but if you look at the pedestrians in the back they're all really looking at him like they all give him weird looks mm. and there's a theory out there that Kang may have put that in his mind and put him in a loop almost like I don't I don't know how much credence to huh. put into this but he throws him in like a pocket reality where everything is great my life doesn't make sense but I like my life you know hmm. and he has that oh. inner monologue and he questions and then he's like ah whatever it's probably fine and then he goes so the reality that he like that 616 that he's living in isn't real yeah, his his universe right there. He's living happily. He's living wow. the life he wants, which Kang is big on. Like at the whole end of Loki, he's like, I can give you, Loki, what you want. You can be ruler. You can be the conch. Like he's big on that. And he's saying his head in the, the, the thing, like the contraption that could make that happen too. That's just a theory. Yeah. So, but uh-huh. it is cool to think about. Theory. <laughs> <laughs> Off film theory. Thanks yeah, for but, watching. Uh, no, so one thing my brother texted me right after the movie, he was like, "Yo, why didn't they, why didn't they kill Ant Man? Why is Ant Man still alive?" And that is that is a big complaint people have. So the whole ending of this movie uh, apparently was reshot and rewritten. There's supposed to be a different Weeks ending before it came right, out. Right, right. So there's it's supposed crazy. to be a different ending out there, and they changed it. How much of that is true? I I think most of it is true, but whatever. This is the ending we got. You can't change that. So, yeah. So why is Ant Man alive? And, I don't think they can kill him. Yeah, because he's how many old Avengers are there left? There's Thor. There's Ant Man. There's well, all Peter we lost Quill. were the were Natasha, Cap, and Tony. So yeah. everyone else is still alive. 
Okay, so we still have Hulk. And T'Challa. Is and gone. T'Challa. Yeah. Oh, and it's T'Challa's loss. Yeah. So there's this whole group of young Avengers, though, and you have to have a better ratio than just like right. three to 12. Right. Because everyone in the first Avengers team was about the same age, and then there's a couple fewer as we went into Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, we'll never get back to that point. Yeah, and you have to have some experienced leaders going into phase five and six. Speaking of that, which was a big thing that was was heavy rumored that Tom Holland is going to be the main lead Tony Stark Iron Man character of the next two Avengers films. They're going to make him, they're going to put him in that spot. That would certainly convince Sony to uh, keep making good movies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, how do you feel about that, though? Because I know, love Spider-Man. We think about this all the time, like, who the heck is our main player now? And Spider-Man is always there. We love Spider-Man, and Spider-Man did kind of have a backseat in the past Avengers films. So I think, yeah, go ahead, make him the head. Now, is he the only main character? No, we're going to have Doctor Strange, I'm sure. Uh, Wanda will be back into play by that point. Wong. She'll have stuff to do. <laughs> Wong, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be somewhere else. He's gonna be on vacation. And like I, if if Spider Man gets to lead a team of like street level heroes and they f- fight a Kang in space, oh, that'd be really cool. Moon Knight, Daredevil, oh, yeah, dude, She Hulk. <laughs> I would just love it if Loki had an integral part to play in the next two Avengers films. If he was like. One of them, what their guide, you know, they're going to hold them off to the last one. That's what I'm saying right now. He's not going to be in a main timeline until the very end. You think? I think so. Season two, he'll be going all over the place. So, and um, then by yeah, go ahead. second, uh, by uh, Avengers, what is that? Six. He will be finally back. He will have all of these, this knowledge and power to defeat Kang, but he'll need the power of friendship <laughs> to defeat the conqueror. Who is this? This is uh, Loki. 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 Yeah. So you're saying that Loki is the main player of the multiverse saga. I mean, I've heard about a video that's coming out. <laughs> Listen, he know he certainly is the most experienced when it comes to this, right. especially from season two, dude, look, what's he going to be doing? You know, tracking down and studying Kang. He's our oldest player in the MCU right now. And who? Loki. Loki. Loki and Thor. Right. They're our oldest living. I mean, there's Rhodey, but he, even he wasn't in Iron Man 1. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> a different actor. And but I mean, knows, Iron Man 2 yeah. did come out yeah. before Thor. But with people with powers, Loki. No, Loki is huge. Yeah, he's huge. Loki's been around. Ben, ben just watched Loki. And, and what a send off they can have right, in Avengers right. 6 with Loki. Right. Finally giving the <laughs> sacrifice after all this time. Listen. There needs to be a scene with Thor and Loki. There needs to be one scene because in Infinity War, he says, the sun will shine on us again, brother. And that's a very poetic line to have him die to, you know. But if we could see it, if we could see the sun shine on them right. one last time. Right. No and I mean, rest rest they, have to, time. they have to fix Thor before that happens. Yeah. Goodness, I do not want Love and Thunder Thor to meet the current Loki because I just want Loki to literally kill Thor. That's Oof. what I would want. But uh, yeah, I do think that Loki will be a, a huge player and that he is like the, the, the core Avenger. And it uh, it is only proven by a rewatch of Loki season one. Ben, you've just rewatched Loki. Two Lokis touching causes a Nexus event. No Kang variant was able to take down Eliath, but three Lokis took down Eliath. So I don't, I think I've, I've said this on a podcast before. I've said this to you before, Ben, but I think the greatest threat to the universe isn't Kang. It's rogue Lokis. Thre- oh, it's rogue Lokis. Yeah. Whoa. Well, that's my thing, dude. Maybe. Because at the end of time, like I could see them having Loki in Kang's spot right. at that, the end of this. That's, yeah. That's something I've thought about too. You know? Yeah. They could go there. That could be the sacrifice that the island he demands. finally gets his throne. <laughs> dude. Dude. Maybe straight up, that gave me chills. Kang isn't as powerful as we think. Maybe he's just a guy with a lot of time on maybe his Maybe he just hands. sucks. Maybe he's... <laughs> maybe he's... <laughs> I like that. Nice. Uh, maybe he's supposed to get wiped out by ants. Maybe he was supposed to look stupid. But we do have to highlight... So, Jeff Love, 
uh, Loveness mm -hmm. is writing Kang Dynasty. He also wrote this movie, and he he also said, "All right, don't don't you worry about Kang not killing Ant Man. Kang will rack up a kill count. So yeah, K Kang will get his hands dirty. He will. Oh, I killed you before." Ooh, yeah, man, he's gonna destroy good. people in Kang Dynasty. He's he's gonna he's gonna mess some. The up. way he just evaporated those warriors. So, so yes, let's uh, let's yeah. talk more about the, this movie because yes, I think what this is reflecting is we really enjoyed this movie for what it does for the future. But let, let's talk about we we like this movie, so let's talk about some aspects to why. And actually, I put up a Instagram poll. Uh, pulling the many, many of our listeners. I got... I put my vote in, too. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I got when three three I written okay. responses, so I want to read Ooh. them. Uh, two of them are fine. One of them I really like. Oh. But uh, basically, I asked, what are your overall thoughts on Ant-Man Quantumania? And uh, Eric Cuffer said, mid. Ooh. <laughs> he just said mid. That's it. No way. Uh uh, Schmidt House 75 said, whole lot of meh. Ooh. Okay, okay. I mean, I feel like you can articulate your thoughts better than that, guys. Come on. Now, now a comment that, um, shout out to Nick. And so, Nicky Flash 1988, he says, this is an 8 out of 10, very comic booky, which I loved, but didn't live up to the grandiose scale I expected. So, mm. okay, but 8 out of 10. That's really yeah, good. It definitely yeah. wasn't an Infinity War level movie like people were hyping it up to be, but it certainly was passable. I think it, like, like we just spent probably 40 minutes talking about what this movie did and how it's exciting us for the rest of the multiverse saga. I think that's what it, it they wanted it to do. So I think it did its job there. But I also pulled uh, people on, I said, Ant-Man is, and there are three options, good, bad, or average. So 44% of people said it was average, and then 56% uh, said, oh, hold up. 44% said it was good, and then 56% said it was average, and 0% said it was bad. And that people is, voted? let's see, we had 18 votes. So okay. not, not crazy, but out of 18 people, no one said it was bad. So Rotten Tomatoes is a little crazy here. Yeah, yeah. Our, our user scores are on the board. Uh, Letterbox gave it a 2.8. So that's that's users. That's all mm. users. Mm. Uh, Metacritic scores were a 48 for critic and a 6.0 out of 10 for user. So, uh, and then the the Rotten Tomatoes audience is in 83. So people like this movie. There's definitely people out there. I'm not sure what the letterbox score is about though. Two point well, two point eight. Yeah, that's not a. It's better than 50 percent. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, so clearly people have problems with it. I want to know if you guys have problems mm. with it. So if you could, if you could narrow yeah. it down, yeah, what just are talk some problem about, spots? Well, There's just to talk about the main thing that you or one thing about this movie that you didn't like. What would it be? So if I had to identify yeah. the single biggest flaw, I think there are tons of flaws in this movie. It's no movie's perfect, and this this movie got has problems. But I think the biggest flaw is just the the cast of the ex-con characters that we get in the first Ant-Man mm. and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I Robin really, I miss those guys so much. Luis and uh, the rest of the gang, you know? I think even just the Luis not being in this movie is, is a huge mistake. Tragedy. I love him. We needed him telling a story or explaining something. If you can give me Korg narrating love and thunder why can't you give me louise narrating something in this come on it's true but how how did that work when he narrated love and thunder like that was not great it was weird it was trash but louise is completely was, different he, he he's is. done it before but i and was, they could throw yeah. it into the movie somewhere i know uh uh payton reed the director of this film said oh, we just didn't think there there was a spot to fit louise in come on there's a spot to fit him you have enough of the movie outside the quantum realm. And heck, why don't you bring him in the quantum realm with you? That would be really fun, too. Seeing him interact with uh, a, a jelly guy. with the Yeah, holes. but then what would he do? What, you would have to give him some care. sort of power to hold his own. I don't care. Or you'd have to kill him. And I, you wouldn't want to kill him. You'd want to kill him. him no, he, 
I wish he could have been in this movie because he's so great, but what would he have done? I like that every time Kang is there, it's completely serious. Yes. But I feel like with Luis being there, you'd cut to him and he would say a joke. That would probably be funny, mm. but he would undercut how much I took Kang seriously, I feel like. And there are even jokes that kind of do go that way. One right, of them for being, sure. um, you know, don't be a dick right. at the end. <laughs> which, that's my le- That's what yeah, I hate. No. So, Modoc, I think it's really cool that uh, they bring Darren back from the first Ant-Man. That is really cool. I think a really nice detail because when you do go back and watch a movie, it, he shrinks that way. His head I, had, is, I it, had no idea who this guy was. I didn't see that, man. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> Micah. Micah. I was like, doesn't. whoa, we got a flashback? Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be pretty important. No, I thought how they set it up was really cool. But yeah, his, his whole arc was... I thought super dumb, but I thought that when he's like, I'm, I'm going to die an Avenger. I liked that. That was pretty funny. Yeah. And yeah, you're in. Yeah. You, you, you made the team. <laughs> so uh, te- test screenings, uh, when they t- tested audience, they kind of were like, all right, this, this isn't how we want it. So they cut out a lot of the dramatic stuff. So it was cool that you say that, um, you're like, oh, the dramatic stuff worked for me. Like you said that, Ben, but Apparently, there was going to be a lot more in there, and I don't know what. Whatever, I think it was, whatever. It was a pretty good amount. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that if they had too much dramatic stuff towards the, my one big grip with this movie is when they first go into the quantum realm and they spend a good 30, 45 minutes just ex- not really exploring, just walking around and talking to people. But the thing is, they set Kang up in the early in the movie so you're waiting for Kang. Yeah, you're waiting for Kang. Yeah. Uh but they I think they spend too much time talking to the Freedom Fighter dudes okay. and too much time talking to I love Bill Murray. I love him so much, but they didn't give me any reason to be invested in him because they get rid of him after that one scene. And if you right. were important later on, then that would be cool. But I felt like that whole scene was pointless. Mm-hmm. Watching it the second time, I was completely turned off from that whole scene. I was like, all right, there's, he's just uh, there to be Bill Murray and laugh right. for a little bit and then leave. That's it. Okay. And similar thing with, not as much with the Freedom Fighters, with uh, Cassie and Scott when they're talking to What's Her Name and Holes Dude. And like, th- there's some cool stuff in there. There's a little bit of lore, a little bit of culture stuff and how Kang has affected these people. It just goes on too long mixed in mm. with the bar scene and just, I don't know. It yeah. could have been tightened up just a little bit more and it would have been good for me. That's my only real complaint with this movie. Uh, I feel that there are things that could have tightened up just overall. How does the story work for you? Story works okay. Yeah, uh, I think that it does what it needs to do on Scott's end. Kang's end, I love Kang's side of the story. Kang and uh, what's her name? That's also in the quantum realm with her, with him. Hope. Uh, hope. No, 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 not, not hope. hope. Janet. Janet. Yeah. Yeah. Their whole story, I think that could have been way more of this It could movie. have been, yeah. I feel yeah. like there was a lot more to this movie. If they cold opened with that. And um, kept going with it for a long time. That would have been a good open. There is story to tell there. For yes. Sure. Yeah. And if they kept showing that, that may have been the seriousness that they that they cut from the movie. Right. Because uh, Janet is, she's a character I feel is underdeveloped because mm. she has these these motives as to not say things, and it just feels like they're withholding nothing from us. At the end, we don't get a real good reason why she didn't tell us these things. Agreed. And. Uh, that could have been developed more in the real world. There isn't enough time spent in the real world to justify her motives. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I would say, going back to the dramatic stuff, that's where I would say, I guess my biggest gripe with this movie comes because I think this movie is, you know, a few scenes from being truly, Mm. really, really, really good. They tightened up just a couple more things, switched around some screen time with just a little, little tiny things. I also think... Then it would be a really, really good movie. The Freedom Fighters, I wasn't too big on them at all. No, I I liked Holes Guy, Jelly Goop Dude. I thought that was so funny. They tried giving (laughs) that one, the leader chick... Some sort of an arc. Yeah, some story. Did not work at no, all. I thought I she was going to die. I, I think hope she would have died. I think we already have so many of the Ant family characters that focusing on another main character 
it does not work. So that does it for me. But I think the MCU humor was interesting because you have Scott Lang and everything he does is great. Right, right. I we haven't highlighted him enough. Paul Rudd, he's so he good. Kills it. And it. Oh yeah. You could give Paul Rudd like a mediocre to bad joke and he'll just run with it. Mm-hmm. He, he, anyone else could be delivering Paul Rudd's lines and I'm like, "Oh, this is uh, this is real dumb. This is corny." But he he just he does it with such charisma that I'm I just I enjoy it. In a universe where everyone is kind of a jokester, right. it's He's, nice to see the actual jokesters perform jokes well and right right i mean yeah. Ant- ant-man's always been like this yeah. so all of these jokes that he's written for they work but in thor love and thunder when you make jane foster a jokey character who is not that way it does not work but just seeing him perform like he every joke that he did in this movie worked for me because mm. mm. i mean it's paul rudd and he is he is great i think also cassie was she was a good actor with a terrible script. Mm. She was not given I get the that. greatest thing to do. Her speech at the end there to oh, yeah, rise yeah. up was not good. One boring. way out. Yeah, it was <laughs> not <way> good. <laughs> so that that was not good. But I keep coming back to the reason I like this movie is because of Kang. Right. With yes. a little bit of so, Paul Rudd take yeah, down. Yeah. Something that was set up in the trailers is... Uh, Kang makes a deal with Ant-Man to give him more time with his daughter. That's something that the trailers leaned into heavily, and it's really not even a part of this movie. And a lot of people were upset by this choice, but when I was watching the trailer and Ant-Man accepts a deal with Kang, like, oh, Ant-Man's such a moron. So I personally was really relieved that that wasn't a story element. Does that disappoint either of you guys? I thought that, so I, I don't remember the trailer too much, but what I was really interested in was how quickly Kang had Scott under his control. Mm. By one simple agreement, right, right. you know, I have Cassie. Mm. That's it. You know, you are you are mine. That's all he had to do. And watching Kang break Scott in the prison scene, yeah. my favorite scene in the whole movie, how I'm, he tries really to, good. Yeah. Like he, he has a couple jokes in there and Kang turns him down. He and his, tries to yeah. come in and Kang turns him down. Did I say you can speak? Yeah. And I love how, oh, how man. dumb he plays that the way Kang is acting. Yeah. Cause he, he's like, a, are you the one with the hammer? And then, Seconds later in the scene, Scott doesn't even reveal anything. He goes, so what's it going to be, Ant-Man? He knew his name. Yeah. He knew he was oh, Ant-Man. Dude. He's playing with him. He's tw- he's like... I didn't even realize he that. Just he wanted never to- said yeah. he was Ant-Man. No, he didn't. Ooh. He just wanted to drop that. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know about the hammer guy. I've killed him. I love the... Uh, the That's a great detail, man. Like, the the yeah. squishing of the, the arms. is it, When it zoomed into his arm, and it was like... The torture, you can see close up that his arm was being squeezed all right. the way up his arm. On, right. And same thing with Cassie. Like, they're being tortured, man. I think that's and my favorite. Fi- yeah. It's putting these not so serious characters in very serious circumstances. Mm-hmm. And it was written so, so well. Hmm. That's where this script is great and i agree with you the one way out sequence is leaves a bit to be desired but the moments we have with king the moments we have with king and scott and the, right. the the stakes and the the depth that we get with king how i like how he still has a heart you see his heart you let them you let cassie and scott hug you say oh, don't shoot they're just they're just hugging they're they're saying their final goodbyes it's building up the emotion he knows how much emotion matters to humans. Right. And, and that's what's going to separate Thanos from Kang. Hmm. Is his uh, his foothold in human emotion. Yeah, and when you have A-list actors doing stuff, anything. They could what's be doing a in? terrible script. They'll improvise and make, make things good. So yeah, having uh, Paul Rudd and Jonathan Majors as a lead of this I, I sold the movie for me. And yeah, if you take both those elements out of it, I think we can all agree it's a it's a bad movie. Yep. But 
it's just those performances worked in the scenes yeah. that they work. <laughs> if you take and, the bad things out of any, or the the best things right. out of any yes. movie, it's gonna, I know, I know. Man, yeah. if any more been so trash, if it did have Iron Man in it, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole movie. So does the they they have Kang yeah. in just enough, and Ant Man plays just enough, and yeah, if you get rid of the main characters, it's gonna be a bad movie. But I think that also. Cassie holds herself up in some ways too, and so does Hope in some ways. And you know they're just the B role act or the 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 secondary characters. The they're wasp, not the Wasp role actors. Yeah, they're not supposed to carry the movie. Should this have been an Ant Man of the Wasp? I don't know, but <laughs> probably shouldn't have titled Ant Man. Is, is the, the wasp. next Ant Man movie going to have another title on it? So it's going to be Ant Man and the Wasp, wasp Quantum Mania <laughs> Part Two Heist Heist. <laughs> You never know. I would say, though, that, and I want to roll this into our favorite scenes, yeah. that that is my favorite scene. The The whole middle chunk is where I right. really felt invested. Definitely. Once Kang was there, and that prison sequence is probably my favorite scene, where he drags Ant-Man across the ray shield. I will make you relive the moment of your daughter's death over oh. and over again. And you believe it. And the way he delivers the lines, it was legitimately making me so excited throughout the whole movie. I was like, you know, even if this movie is bad, I know going forward, we get this performance. Yeah, exactly. And so the handling of Kang, you guys are, are fine with it. I know we've already established that, right? So yeah. you don't care that ants kind of depower him. I don't and think they did. You don't think they did? No, I think it was just the, I mean, yeah, they Bad timing. Only took him. Yeah, they overtook him, sure, but it was because of Modoc that that was able to happen, and it was because of um, that he could have started shooting. He could have, yeah, yeah. He he's such a powerful character. This isn't the end of him. Yeah. This is not the end of if King. If it Conqueror. is, then I'm mad. And it right. didn't kill him either. The ants didn't kill him. He ended up on the top of the tower yeah. anyway. But then Scott beats him in a fist fight. We cool yeah. that. I think it was cool that Scott. Looked like he definitely did not have any hand to hand combat experience. Scott looked like he was about to die. Yeah, he was sure. about to die, yeah. die. And I even, I will admit, even during that scene, I was kind of, I was like, you know what? I'm cool if they kill Ant Man. I'm not going to lie. I would be kind of down for this dark ending. I would have been cool if they trapped him and Hope in the quantum world. That would have been sick. Even that, that yep. they wanted to do that, but they kind of were like, uh, or Payne Reed was like, that's kind of how we ended the last movie. And it's yeah. true. Scott yeah. did get stuck in the quantum realm. So I understand not wanting to repeat the same note. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But I don't know. It, there's definitely it feels in almost during. I mean, did you guys feel that at the end? Yeah, I felt it. that it, that it was kind of almost coming to a, a climactic point where it was like, I could see them killing off Ant-Man. The feels that I got from the end of this movie were I I haven't felt this in a while is mm. what is going to happen next. Yeah. This is the end of the movie. What are we doing? Yeah. Whoa. Like mm -hmm. where is Ant-Man going from here? And first you think, oh, okay, they're going to keep him in the quantum realm. Oh no, no, no they're not. Now what's the cliffhanger going to be? Oh, okay. He's, he's just going to live happily. Okay. That, that's great. No, no. There's a threat of Kang. Ooh. Now what? Okay, so Kang could be coming back, but we don't know. Oh, but now Loki is going after oh. Victor Timely. <laughs> so now this is the most cliffhanger. <laughs> it feels like the MCU of old. In yes. A way, to where it's this like. Is, this is the first movie in a while where it's like, oh, we got to. I am excited for the well, next movie. Yeah, that was the main problem with phase four. We were waiting for some connectivity to come in. And I think we might even get that more. Like uh, we have uh, Iman Vellani. Or Miss Marvel's banglet and Shang Chi's rings, which are Phase Four is a mixed bag. Yeah, yeah with they're that. rumored, but the rings, these elements, these artifacts, are rumored to be connected to Kang. Yeah, speaking of that, um, there are some there's some orange magic in this movie. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's evidence to suggest that orange magic, which is the same that the sorcerers use and Shang Chi uses, right? Mm -hmm. They all come from the quantum realm. There's there's the um, just the simple bar door. <laughs> What's up with that? Using orange magic that looks just like Doctor Strange magic. What's it'll up with all, that? It'll all tie together. Yeah. There's definitely a connection. And it was so sure. casual, too. It was just like, I'm opening up this door, and it's a bar. <laughs> 
Did you think it was some sort of secret hideout or something? But it, did mm. the VFX work for you guys? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. think they yeah. worked for me. Even Modoc. Yeah. Even Modoc. <laughs> I was even mad about no, Modoc. It was, it was, like, it was I Modoc is the only part of this movie where I, the entire time I was like, "Does this work?" Yeah, you're quite. You, this does work. Yeah, because they're very self aware with it. Yeah, 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 it was good that they were self aware because if they like, took it, they have to be. If they took 100 percent seriously, people are going to laugh at the wrong spots. It's not going to work. And I'm glad that they played Modoc exactly how he needed to be, so that we can just move on, get this character done. <laughs> yeah, because he's an important character that needs to be in the MCU at some point. And sure, you know, if that's how we got to see him, then that's how we got to see and, him. If we got to see his cheeks, that's how we got to. Yeah. You got to see his and cheeks. Yes, we've seen the Spy Kids 3 comparisons, and they are indeed very funny. Okay, they are. But come on. There's even the, yeah. the growing pizza. Hmm. Right. From the. <laughs> From the microwave thing. I saw a guy who said, give Robert Rodriguez a check for Ant-Man. Oh, come Oof. on. Just so it's, <laughs> sh- sh- rip him off. No. <laughs> I, no dude, I, I wasn't even, not during the whole film, I wasn't mad with, with how they no, handled it. I thought Monarch. it looked fine. Yeah, I can great. empathize, though, with the non-initiated. Because that, I mean, it's just a weird, it's a weird freaking character, dude. I mean, just look at the guy. There's a friggin' face. His acronym doesn't even work. <laughs> right. I, I like how they called attention to that Modoc. in the movie. Yeah. More like Mo. Yeah. See, that's that's gold. They were completely aware of what they were doing. Yeah. Right. And it worked. Yep. I agree. So did uh, the whole story of how Cassie thinks that even though Scott saved the world, that now he's doing nothing? Is that a valid point? Like he's he wrote a book. He's been telling people what happened in Endgame, but he hasn't really been making a difference. He's kind of, I don't know. I I think there is a valid point there. Like you can't just accomplish one thing and then sit on a throne your whole life. Isn't that so cool? Mm-hmm. How uh, a character yeah. at the beginning of the movie can um, uh, could be living life one way, and then by the end of the movie, he's living a different way. And uh, <laughs> I just really wish they did what, what Thor: they, Love and Thunder. Right. You know, uh, that would be such a cool idea if they had some sort of what would you call that? A character? Uh, let's call it an arc. Move. Character Movement? arc. Um, yeah. Development. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Is the term. If, yeah. If a character <laughs> changed throughout the movie and, and some had some reason, yeah, some, some reason to yeah. have the movie at yeah. all. <laughs> like love I love thunder. your complete heel turn on Love and Thunder because our. Yeah. Initial- I still think it was funny. I just hate that it's a movie. <laughs> yeah, the Love and our, Thunder. Our slander. initial reaction for Love and Thunder, you're like, I love. I still enjoy this. it. I just hate it at the I, same time. I'm so confused. I enjoy the movie. All right, like like. Uh, that, We'll talk about right, it. We were talking about favorite we'll scenes. Yeah. Micah, yes. is yours the monologue the, at the end? No, no, I said the my favorite scene was the prison scene, just like Ben said. Um, yeah, I I liked the um, that whole sequence from by the time Scott is in prison to um, the end of the uh, uh, growing of the orb thingy. I forgot what it's called. Where we get to see all of the different possibility mm. Ant Men. And then the that Baskin cool, Robbins at man yeah. just out of nowhere. That was cool. That's my favorite joke in the whole movie. That made me laugh too that much. That was really good. <laughs> Baskin <laughs> Robbins? Yeah. Yeah. I'm dressed weirdly. Look at you guys. I'm the other one wearing normal people clothes. <laughs> yep. I think that is a cool concept. Like every possible thing you could do, you create a new universe. Yeah. That's how the multiverse works. It's really cool. It's probability storm. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. probability storm. yeah. The whole time I'm thinking. And the that. visual <laughs> of Ant-Man and the Wasp coming together at the end to team up. And that was like, great. We're all working for one goal. This should be possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think my favorite scene is, I mean, just take any scene with Jonathan Majors. I think is good. Oh yeah. But yeah, that ending, that end monologue with Paul Rudd, I think is really good because you're, you are sitting there like, man, did they just kill Kang like that? That was so maybe dumb. Did they? And then, yeah. Oh, man, the question mark did at the they? end of this movie. Wait, did we win? Did we win? I think it's a good button up on the film, and I, I like it just going forward. And, yeah, seeing seeing Loki and Mobius in the post credit scene was also just – I because I was talking about I'm like – are we going to see that? That was our big theory going into Multiverse of Madness. All oh, the post credit scenes going to be Loki. 
But then this time I'm like, you know what? I don't want it to be Loki. And then it was. So huh. it, uh, <laughs> you should say that more often. You know, I like how you said it. Uh, it buttons up because it, it, it buttons up the shirt almost all the way to the top, but it leaves a little bit of chest hair on the top. So you, you know, this is a mm. this is a real man's movie. <laughs> Do we want to give scores? Because uh, I have a score have for a, this movie. I have a score. I like giving these scores, and then we can review them when we get back to them in the in the watch through. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. It's a little less cemented. Just yep. kind of like yeah, f- yeah f- just for kind fun. of fun. Just kind of a, um, a, a love and thunder kind of score. Right, that way in three years we can uh, th- go back and look. My, speaking of that, Micah, can you pull up your love and thunder score? Yeah. Because I, I gave it a 6.8. What did I give it? You gave it a 6. Oh, what did I give it? Oh, my goodness. Five. Can I go back? Uh, nope. Change that to you a... Can go ba- you can go back when, when we, we get there. Change Watch that it. to a one, man. Hey, we've got 50 Holy more movies ca- to get to. Holy cow, a six. I gave that a six. I remember well, we Well, Micah, were- I think we we both changed. Cause I think we both, all of us, all three of us would go down. I hate that movie. Yeah, that's a six. Dude, man, that's egregious. Your hate for that movie is uh, unmatched. <laughs> it's uh, it, when my MCU rankings, I have the whole... MCU and then I have a separate category for oh. Thor Love and Thunder. It's not Ooh. it doesn't even deserve to be with the rest wow. of them. Wow. Yeah. Ben, what were you thinking for a score? Uh I, I gave it an eight. An eight? I, I gave it an eight. I really, really enjoyed this movie. Kang had me. Kang mm. is the reason it's at an eight. Without Kang, this is probably a six. But I mean he's the main villain, so it's like you can't have the with movie a different a villain. villain though. Like if this if they made and this was just Modoc. Well if yeah, if they made Modoc or Yellow Jacket the main villain, it would just not be that great. But all the questions it set up and how much it made me think and the post credit scenes were epic. The way Ant Man Paul Rudd acts, it's an eight. And I, what I good really media like does is it takes you to more media. And you have already rewatched Loki. And you said your YouTube grind has been crazy. So yes. I think that that in and of itself is like, yeah, that's a testament to the movie for you. I know a lot of fans aren't feeling that way, but I'm glad that us three are are positive. And I mean, I'm not I'm not as high as an eight, but I'll go. I'm going seven point two for this 7. one. Point two. Yeah. Right. I'm giving a little higher than an eight. I'm going to do. Uh, so I gave Spider-Man an eight point two. Oh. This isn't a Spider-Man. No. I'm going to say it's an eight point zero. Eight. Solid what? eight. Solid eight. <laughs> yeah. Very if nice. I was debating an eight point one. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll just do an eight. We'll call that good. I do like that. that gives us a seven point seven average. I I'd say that's where it's I like that. Yeah. yeah. And so, I like that we're doing this now because when we come back to mm-hmm. it, then we've got to know where we were. In years. So we're saying it's a little worse than Spider Man one, a little bit better than uh X two, a little bit better than Spider Man three. But it also isn't uh, when we do our yeah. marathon. It's a little more. Uh, it's different. In depth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But did did we give Morbius rankings? Oh, uh, I think I did we, gave we my did. Morbius we did. score. What uh, did we give Morbius? Ethan, you gave it a five. Ben, you gave it a six and a half. I gave it a six point two, giving it a five point nine. Okay. Yeah. And to compare it to, uh, is good. oh, we didn't give Multiverse of Madness scores. That's we right. didn't. I remember that because we were like yeah, we're like, doing every other movie now. Yeah, every other movie. All yeah. right. So. I would like to keep doing scores. Although I would like to do scores for Guardians Volume Three. Oh my goodness! Which yeah. I would say is my favorite part of this movie because nothing in this movie tops the trailer that I saw in IMAX. You know what? Dude, you're right, dude. Seeing the Peter, trailer for Guardians Three, that is shot with than Peter than on the ground, right. like with his gun. Yeah, that stuck in my mind. It. Yeah, that. Since you've been on. Like I said, it, the MCU is at a point where, like, these characters, I don't, the screen doesn't turn on, and I love these characters. That's very rare. Like, I love Spider Man, I love Daredevil, and I you love do? the Guardians. <laughs> yep. You know, do you I like love, Daredevil? I, I do like Daredevil quite well, a bit. Even my mother in law, who does, I mean, she watches these movies, but yeah, I very, she watches the definition movies. of casual is so excited. When's my movie coming out? When's my movie Volume coming three? out? Yeah. She My dad so loves excited. Guardians. And that's the thing. Anyone likes Guardians. So I remember he, was, he watched Infinity War. Yeah. And he's like, I like these guys. Uh, these these are cool guys. And I'm like, <laughs> Dad, they have movies. Are you implying you haven't seen the movies? He's like, movies. <laughs> what are, who are these guys? Movies plural, son. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you blew his mind. We watched children. Guardians one and two back to back that night. Ah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. The back to back is a. Truly a special experience for sure. Oh yeah. But 
what will also be a special experience is watching Captain America, the first Avenger for our Marvel movie marathon. That'll be the next podcast that hits you as far as movies go. You'll get the weekly show with me and Ethan, but that's what's coming up in the future for Multiverse Monologues. We're going to have to talk about when we're going to do that after this, but I'm certainly looking forward to that. Still haven't seen it. I'm trying to keep it fresh, but... um, Keep an eye out. Last of Us is wrapping up here pretty soon here. We only have a couple episodes left. Mando's coming out. By the time you guys are listening to this, Mando will be out. Uh, Right? I'm going to try and have this up the next day. Yeah, like the very next day. So I'm going to try and get it up quick. Well, then Mando will be out in just a couple hours for you guys. Yeah. I'm jealous of you guys. I know, right? That's awesome. (laughs) Very excited for Mando season three. And Creed 3, you have... have There's a ton of movies coming out in March, too. Like John Wick... Very excited to be a movie nerd. Transformers. That's coming out too, right? June. June. Yeah. Hey, that's, that that's coming out Scream fast, 6. Scream 6. There you go. That's another one. March is a big, big month for movies. So Y'all, y'all can rush to the theater to see John Wick 4. I, I don't think I'll be joining you. Blue Beetle coming out sometime. August, I think. Yeah, August. Did you, hear, did you hear this man, Micah? Indiana Jones. What's up? He did not like the first John Wick. The first one? Did not. You, you didn't like it. Did you watch the other two? I have not seen the other two. Okay. So the first one is well, the weakest, but only because it's the first one, and it just gets better and better. I see, in my opinion, it's the reverse really? for John Wick. Well, John Wick Ooh, I think it gets better. If that first John I, I Wick like, is the best one, then I want nothing John to Wick do with John Wick 4 that. podcast? I absolutely, I would totally do that. Yeah. I absolutely love the first John Wick. What did you I watch think, John Wick on? On my TV. On your TV? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a that's like a Christopher Nolan kind of experience. You got to watch a big screen, high def. Well, I'm the certainly HCR not really watching. Really helps it. the movie too. Yeah, <laughs> not now. Yeah, Ethan was not a fan. So, hmm. so. It, it all right. It's legit. Guy gets mad and shoots things for an hour. No, oh, but his motives. It's way more. What are, it's way more deep than that. It's the not. Dog though. is killed. Who remember, cares? So whatever. Remember, remember the scene. Get over it, dude. Remember the scene of him sitting in the chair. Yeah, and. He literally lays out why he's doing this. Right. That I get scene it. hits so hard. Oh, when he takes a sledgehammer? When she died, she gave me that dog. I also and gave like me a chance. I thought the score was so annoying. The score was bad. The, the music score is like so the annoying. soundtrack, the lyrical music is good. Yeah. But the score is I agree. Like, the score every is time bad. he's doing something, they're playing this like like rocks. I'm like, I don't care. What are you do? What are you smashing the floor, dude? Oh, I thought the floor was pretty uh, sick. I know. I, I, I really John, wanted no, to like John Baba Wick. Yaga. I did. John Wick is a nine for me. It's My dad so says good. Baba Yaga occasionally from time Baba to time. Yaga. Baba Yaga. Dude, that's good. And I, this, I sent him the John Wick 4 <laughs> trailer, and he just texts back, Baba Yaga! Baba in Yaga. all caps. <laughs> this is not the John Wick podcast, but I, I do wish you shared in the love, Ethan. It would be nice. I can't but, love hey, everything. Hey, and, you know absolutely. What? Revenge you know, stories aren't my thing, I guess. Uh, there's... There's also a, a shadow drop that Marvel didn't really advertise too much. This uh, Secret Invasion already no, dropped. No, not Secret Dang. Invasion. Uh, it's called Moon Girl secret. and the Devil Dinosaur. What? Yeah. Uh, you guys didn't see this at all? This was a Marvel show that dropped last week. Hmm. And nope. I, but I believe Marvel, it's canon. No, Marvel drops kid stuff all the time. You sure? They, they yeah, Spider-Man and Friends is always on drop in the... Yeah, whatever. True. That's not... That's not Marvel no. canon, Micah. No. Don't, and don't. Lawrence Fishburne is in it? Oh, well, then I guess we have to watch it because yeah. he was also <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, and yeah, John Wick. And John Wick. Eventually. I'm not thinking of either that. I'm thinking about his best role ever in the best movie ever, The Rise of the Silver Surfer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, no way. I forgot. Go check it out. We have a podcast on that. Yeah, so stay tuned for all that movie world, multiverse monologues world. Be greatly appreciated. But thanks for s- thanks for sticking around this long. We truly appreciate it. It's been <laughs> thank you, Zach. It's been yeah, it's been quite Time a while. Is relative. <laughs> it's gonna Time be. is not what you think it is. Yeah, so that's gonna be very not very nice. But uh, for now, this is Ben Rayside. This is Ethan Wetzloff. This is Mike Hunt. Signing off. We all hope you have a fantastic day.